there gang. I'm going to do some work on a couple of old lap steels. This will be another short and sweet one because I'm not actually here. I'm actually on holiday. First vacation since 2018. Woohoo. First up we have a Harmony. I believe it's an H3 model. Probably from the mid to late 40s, maybe early 50s. It's gold. I love the finish. It's vaguely Gibson gold top-esque. Uh, I also love the obvious nature of the stencil that they used for spraying the uh, fret markers. You know, they're all kind of fuzzy and you can tell they were working really fast there at the factory. This has one of the Gibson pickups in it. Like an actual made for Gibson pickup. It's the P13 which is the direct predecessor to the P90. Very similar in a lot of ways. Kind of replaced the Charlie Christian model pickup. Um, introduced in the early 40s on models like the ES-125, but it only stuck around for a couple of years in the Gibson lineup. The main difference is it's got a metal cover plate, like you can see here, and it's said to be a bit warmer and darker. I think the output's a little bit higher, too, than the P90. But Gibson went all in with the change, you know. They didn't phase them out slowly over a number of years. They just sold their entire inventory in one go to Harmony who continued putting them on guitars into the 1950s. The H3 was made for sale through the Montgomery Ward catalog. No, not too fancy, just a little workhorse of a guitar. At some point in the past, the original tuners got swapped out for these gold Grovers. And they kept with the color scheme at least. But the owner wants to know if I can put the originals back on, because as luck would have it, they were saved with the guitar. And I hemmed and hawed a little bit because uh, I know this style of tuner requires a bigger hole in the headstock. Uh, so we couldn't use original bushings. They were gone anyway. But I set a check around and I found a set of adapter bushings that should hopefully fill that big hole and allow us to use the old set. So we'll give those a try. Oh, happy day. The holes weren't drilled oversize. They're going to be perfect. A good press fit. Okay, I got my little bushing pusher here. Just a uh, piece of plywood with cork on the face and a bolt that runs through it. Used with one of these uh, through board jig knobs. American friends, if you want to do this with a quarter twenty bolt, you'll find that it's just slightly too large. So. Um, I chucked mine in a drill press there and filed off about 15 thousandths so that uh, there's still enough thread on it for the bolt to capture but the diameter is sufficient to accept the bushings. It's kind of important. Yeah, I'm going through a lot of tuner screws lately. The box is getting low. Okay, I think that's a respectable solution. Be aware that uh, these are quite a bit taller than the originals would have been to accommodate for the extra material in the center. They're sort of mushroom or dome shaped and um, you know depending on the length of your tuner shaft and where the hole is drilled you might not get a whole lot of wraps around. In this case I managed two, which is enough. Not a slide player. Don't pretend to be a slide player. I'm just gonna make some noise.
And this one, this is a bit of a classic. You'll see it pop up in all the books. It's a National Dynamic, made in Chicago by Valco for National. Uh, this is the post-war version. The ones they made in the early 40s had an asymmetrical design, sort of like stair steps. Uh, in the post-war they switched to this symmetrical shape, but they still kept the stairs, the steps stuff going on in the uh, fingerboard there. It's so 1950s. Look at this thing. It's really populux. Feels like it would be at home in a Brunswick bowling alley, you know? Look at the shapes and the colors. Later in the 50s they went to a monochromatic pattern, but they changed this side piece here to this beautiful dark red. It's just, it's gorgeous. The issue is... Got a tone control that doesn't seem to change the tone, and a volume pot that works, but seems to turn beyond where you want it to, which is uh, very disconcerting. Also, seems to be quite a bit of noise coming off this thing. So let's have a look under the cover. First things first, let's see if we can get rid of the residue from what was no doubt a price sticker selling it for $14 at some swap meet in 1978. Yeah, much better. Eee. Hmm. Boy, they did not give you any room to move on those uh, wires. That is a newer pot. It's an Alpha. Let's remove this thing. A little set screw on here. Okay. Okay, 250k alpha pot. anything immediately wrong. Well, I'm going to assume that that cap has probably seen better days. Um, as soon as I touch it, all the wax falls off this thing. Um, Industrial Condenser Corporation Zero 0.05 microfarad. Got my solder sucker here. Seventy year old lead. Put a little piece of shrink tubing on there just to make sure it doesn't uh, short out against anything. And to leave enough space for things to be positioned correctly. I think that'll do. Good. It's important to be able to do those wah-wah swells so you can make them all weep during So Lonesome I Could Cry. Okay, regarding the hum, I mean, part of that's just honking big 1950s single coil. But the other thing is the way this um, electronics cavity has been laid out, I don't think this is the original style of jack that went in these. They might have had an integral cord. You'll recall the silver Hawaiian from last year, which has the cord attached to it. Uh, but this, um, you've got the pot directly over top of the barrel of the jack and all the working stuff going on here. Oh, hey, that's interesting. That shouldn't be. That may have come off just now. Yeah, there's stuff going on here. I'm not sure why. There's a grounding lug attached to the guitar. There is no case grounding, again, for some reason. 
So I decided to redo things by the book, as it were. Try and make it look more like a Leo Fender scheme than whatever this was. Things like run an actual ground wire to the tone pot. The pickup's hot lead had been cut so incredibly short that I think it necessitated some of the weirdness. You can't be afraid to take three minutes and graft on an extension in cases like this. So I'll get things folded together neatly and use some old-fashioned paper masking tape to isolate the jack from the back of the pot. Again, good enough for Leo. I don't feel bad. One day I'll take some time and investigate how to play one of these. It's a lot quieter now in terms of electronics buzz 